I'm doing a little meditation here on Azamara from Nachman of Reslov's Likutei Moran, Collected Essays. And uh, this is um, 282 in part one of uh, essay 282 in part one of this uh, Likutei Moran, Azamra. I will sing. I will sing. I will sing. The Azamra will form. Uh, form of it makes it emphasize it. So it's just, we're talking about a special kind of singing here, not just ordinary that kind of singing. All right. So what I'm going to do is uh, try to um, do a kind of improvised uh, lecture here. And later on, I'll try to make a video out of it by putting, plugging in some images and video clips, especially from the scary dream DreamWorks session, but I, I might, as I go along, I might find myself uh, throwing in other stuff also. This is the first time I've done this process, so it might be a little, probably be a little rough, maybe a little bit un incoherent, but I'm just going to try and experiment here and see how it works. Because what I did up to now was taking DreamWork, original DreamWorks, and, I'm, and make adding comments to that as I did the DreamWork. Here, I'm starting with the comments and uh, plugging in the dream work, so I'm doing the opposite process, you might say, than, uh, than doing a dream. But basically, it's the same, same shtick, the same uh, philosophy I'm peddling here. I'm into Nachman of Breslov's uh, point of view here. And Okay, here we go. So Zamra, I'm, I'm starting on the... the uh, oh, by the way, I'm using the... Breslov Research Institute translation here. I don't know exactly who did the translating. It doesn't, let's see, it doesn't say here. Um, this is the little pocket book that they put out with uh, Zamra and IA together in one little book. And has the English without the Hebrew. Um, if I need the Hebrew, I'll, I'll dig that out. I have that here also, but maybe I won't need it. We'll see. All right. So I'm, I'm just focusing on individual sentences at first, and, to, to, and then a little as we go along, I'll see how these sentences come together into uh, bigger, bigger statements. If I find the bigger statements, all right. So in the introduction, we have the sentence: "But the sanctuary is constructed out of the good points of every Jew." Now, what sanctuary is he talking about? Um, if you look at the scary movie uh, video, you'll see, you'll see I get into that sanctuary idea pretty deep. So I'm in this corridor, and inside of me is going to happen this horror story. Horror story, hmm. Well, all right. I'm just letting it all happen. I'm just letting it all happen. Whatever come happens will happen, you know? I'm just letting it all happen. I'm just... I'm just sitting here, and I'm the voice that flows forth from Franklin. I'm just carrying this whole monologue along, you know. I am the voice that comes out of Franklin. I'm like a big corridor, endless and endless, and uh, through me pass all the beats of the dialectic, everything that goes on. And I am this voice that keeps coming on. The voice, the voice. I am the voice, but... I'm not the pure voice, I'm just the, the beginning voice, the monologue, I'm the, ah, I am, here we get theological folks, sorry about that, I am the sanctuary, you know, Moses stretches out his hand or something makes a sanctuary, so in other words, a sanctuary is the here and now process of working on awareness moment by moment, the meditative process, <clears throat> and the words that come out, the words that come out create this bubble of, of living experience. This monologue is the bubble, the sanctuary within which holiness could happen. Certainly it couldn't happen without the sanctuary. It couldn't happen with just everyday cause and effect logic. If I didn't stay here and now, then I would just be, you know, thinking about how much how much my new computer is going to cost me this week if I can scrape that money together and what about this lady and that lady and uh, and stuff like that but 
If I'm here and now, meditative process, then I am the sanctuary, this flow of phenomenological experience, the here and now moments, which is the bubble of awareness, which is the tent, the holy tent, from which God can send down his word if he wants to. Okay, so the sanctuary. God sends out his hand, Moses sends out his hand, and he creates a sanctuary, <clears throat> something like that. I think it says somewhere in the, in the Bible. Um, the idea is that each moment of awareness, uh, which you get to either by saying I'm aware of something or by identifying with something. For example, if I say I am a butterfly, then that's a way of getting to the inner idea of that butterfly and being aware of the butterfly, rather than judging the butterfly or, or analyzing the butterfly, uh, you know, scientifically using deductive logic. Okay, so. The sanctuary is, an, is a metaphor here for this inductive process of working with awareness and identifications to build up a bubble uh, of awareness or, or in biology, uh, uh, somebody named um, uh, von Jukskull calls it the Umwelt, for example, the, the, the phenomenological experience of a fly is his Umwelt, Welt is world, I guess that's his own personal world. Um, so allowing yourself to act like, to be like a fly here instead of like a, an intellectual uh, person and just see where the world uh, from, uh, from a fly point of view or from a bug point, uh, from a worm point of view or from a, um, just uh, seeing it in a simple biological way rather than a sophisticated intellectual way. That is uh, what we mean by induction. So in a sense, induction is a higher form of uh, seeing, uh, perceiving, but it's also over a lower form of perceiving. It's associated more with the autonomic nervous system rather than the sympathetic nervous system. Okay, so the sanctuary is constructed out of the good points of every Jew. Well, forget Jew here, just a person or a creature even. So that by good points, we mean the points that are associated with the ultimate good, which comes out of all this uh, inductive uh, awareness type process. That's the, what Plato would probably call the good the encompassing overall total enlightenment state that you would get to if you stayed with one dream for the rest of your life and worked on it. Uh, so that good is the, is the ultimate reference point when, he, when he's talking about the good, the good points, points which are related to that good, that ultimate uh, messianic holistic uh, experience of enlightenment that comes when you, you get rid of all the when you leave the uh, deductions behind and, and can get involved in a world of inductions. Okay, so that's the gestalt bubble uh, that comes out of th uh, five minutes or three hours of dream work. Um, that awareness continuum um, is a sanctuary in, in a sense that it's a holy place where the divine soul is operating rather than our everyday animal soul is operating. Well, there I just created a conf confusion because I just said that animals like flies are on a higher level, and in here we in our in our dopey uh, narrow sectarian uh, one, uh, religious point of view we want to say that the animal soul oh that's our lower side but actually <laughs> from this point of view the animal soul is the higher side but that, that's just going to get confusing so let's just say the animal soul here in the conventional sense is the one that's stuck in and all these uh, rigid distinctions, this, that, and the other thing, deductions, whereas the, um, the divine soul, we're looking at it here, phenomenologically speaking, is the, re is the liberated the soul that's uh, involved in inductive logic. Bell Baca is the name of this young lady. We're doing a, uh, I'll talk to the camera for a second. So we're doing our awareness exercise for two hours. Um, and we're starting now. Okay, so what are you aware of now? That's the question we're asking basically for the next two hours. I'm aware of the cool air, my feet on the ground, my tummy because I just ate. my hair tied up. You want physical things, right? 
I'm not saying. I'm not. I'm being like tar baby. I'm not answering any questions for the first hour. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm just asking the basic question, and you make, what are you aware of, and what does that question mean to you, and answer it that way. Oh, you're asking it again? I'm always asking it for the next two hours, right? <laughs> I'm aware of seeing you in all blue I'm aware of feeling a little bit anxious because I don't know I've never done this I'm aware of like my center feeling a little anxious like in my stomach You want more? Um, I feel like I have energy, but at the same time I feel like my energy is zapped, and I feel like that often. Uh, I'm aware that my eyes probably look red because I have some sort of irritation. It might be soap or something that happens every so often where I think especially this one, it's red. So I'm aware of that. I'm aware of feeling a little bit icky, I don't know. I'm aware of feeling embarrassed that I cry. funny that I cried. <laughs> 